Welcome back to Debris Day. Today on Debris Day is about recovery of lithium ion batteries from a load of battery packs. Let's go, guys. So one of the next projects we're working on for the solar power for the shed is to migrate from the lead acid batteries, which are down there, to lithium ion. Now, there's a few bits and pieces associated with lithium ion batteries, but first and foremost is that you have to buy some 18650 batteries, which are the common batteries which you use in battery packs from laptops. So I've gone on eBay, um, I've done some research, and I've ordered up, uh, I think it's 16 or 20 battery packs uh, for about 30, 40 pounds, and each of these battery packs contain lithium ion batteries. Um, these are what a lithium ion battery looks like. These are ones I just did a quick test to recover. Um, these are Samsung 18650. These are the Samsung 18650 batteries. Now, what you can do, you take your multimeter, once you've recovered one, put it onto volts, and these should be 3.2, 3.3 volts or thereabouts. Um, so we've, we've covered it, we separate them off, hold this onto here, and if you look at the multimeter, that's quite low, just over three volts, but it's still an active, good battery, because these can be fully charged. So, I have to strip all of these battery packs here. I then will recover all of the batteries, strip them all out, pop them into here so they're nice and safe. And then once we've done that, uh, next video we'll show you what we're gonna do with them. In essence though, we're gonna make a lithium ion battery for the solar panel. Let's get cracking. Hi guys, okay, it's the next day after recovering all of those batteries, lithium ion batteries, out of the laptop batteries. I wanna show you what we've recovered and then I'll take you to the next stage, which is how we check all of those batteries, make sure they're healthy. So, over here, my box of many things, are all the batteries that I've recovered. Now, some of them, some of the, uh, what I would call the sheaths, came off of them and I'll talk about that separately in a moment. Um, out of those 16 packs, um, most of them had between four and six cells in them. Uh, as I say, some of the paper's still on there, some of them are a little bit, a little bit damaged. Um, some of them have still got little um, pieces of the uh, nickel on top and bottom where they've been soldered. Um, but we've got approximately 120 cells um, out of those 16 packs, which is quite a lot. Now, not all of these cells are going to work, so we have to take them to the next stage, which is testing them for their volts. And then I'm going to talk about the Lito Kala Engineering Lil 500, which is our charger and um, I guess is a conditioner of the batteries. So let's do that. Okay, so I've just taken a random selection of these cells, um, say different colors, different sizes, and whatnot. Um, what we've got here is our multimeter, and we're going to turn it to. 20 volts. Normally these batteries should be anywhere from two and a half volts to just under four volts, and it could be a mixture between them. Um, what normally happens in a, a pack of battery cells is that if there's six in a set, one or maybe two of them will die, and that'll uh, consider the, the battery pack unusable, but the remaining cells in that pack typically are okay. So we take our plus and minus, I'm gonna take a good known cell to start with to show you what a positive view looks like. Let's just adjust the camera. Here we go. So I know this cell's a good cell. 
Um, reason D, I know that is that I've already tested it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. So um, we'll pop this on here and pop this on the other end. And what you'll see is, oops, just quite difficult to do it with the camera there. Uh, that's got 3.68, 3.67 volts on that cell. And these cells can go up to maximum 4.2. And there's an argument that says if they go down to less than uh, 2.5 volts, then they're useless. But um, I'm going to challenge that, challenge that a little bit. I've charged up a couple of these uh, low cells from 1.8 volts, and I've gone all the way to 4.2 and tested correctly. So um, I'm no expert on this, but I'll leave it to you to determine what's good and bad. Anyway. What you'll do, you'll take, a, you'll take a cell and you'll just go through and you'll test them all. Um, obviously, I'm not going to do all that now because it'll be here forever. But I want to show you what a bad cell looks like. I don't know if I've got any here. Let's have a quick check. So pop this on here. Pop this on here. Again, that's 3.7. That's a good. Um, let's try this green one. Pop this on here. Pop this on here. Ah, there you go. Then that's... 1.9 so a lot of people would throw that away but we're not going to throw it. we're going to give it a try um anyway you go through all of your cells and you decide which ones are good cells um i know some of these cells are completely dead i'm just trying to find one for you just to show you though when you put it on there you don't get any readings whatsoever uh no that one's still okay Let's just try one more And that one's okay, 1.9 volts. So anyway, um, once you've done all of that, you can then put them into a charger. Uh, before I do that, I just want to show you the shrink wrap that I've purchased. So where some of your cells may be damaged, um, and say this, this paper has come off of them, uh, you can actually get some new shrink wrap. And here's an example. So I haven't tidied this up yet on purpose, so I can show you. Um, but you put like the sheath over the top of the battery and then you just use a heat gun and warm it up. So where this battery or the cell was all um, silver and the paper was damaged, I'll just get a, a knife around this bottom piece here. Um, we can then reuse these cells completely. And this is just for extra safety in case uh, you know any breakages happens or whatnot in the future. So that's the, uh, the covering up of the cells. So let's talk about the next part, which is charging the cells and testing the cells. So. Uh, this is the Lito Carlo Engineering LII 500. Um, it's a certainly a charger, um, and on the side of it, uh, you've got a, a USB output. So, if uh, you had this full with cells and they all work in cells, you can use this as a, a portable USB charger. Um, what this device actually does is it can charge the batteries. It can do a normal test, and what it does on a normal test is it will fully charge the battery then it will fully discharge the battery and it will show you how many milliamp hours are located in each of those batteries. Um, uh, that's on a normal cycle. And then there's a fast cycle as well, which will do something very similar. So what we're trying to do on this is see if the batteries will take a charge, then if they do take a charge, what their milliamp hours are. And we write that on the battery. And the reason being, you can then separate the batteries out into high milliamp hours, medium or low. That's what I'm going to do anyway. So sort of 1600 to 1800, 1800 to 2000, 2000 plus. And then you can use those to make your battery packs up. So how do we do this? This is a bit weird. The plus is on the bottom on this. So you take one of your cells, um, you slide it in, and you see the screen changes. If I just zoom in there, you can see it. Now you have eight seconds to change it. You can see you cycle through charge, fast test, or normal test. Um, normally you charge it first to make sure it holds a charge. And on the right hand side here, you can change your current from 300 amps, 500, uh, sorry, 300 milliamps, 500 milliamps, 700 milliamps, and 1000 milliamps. I'm gonna go for 1000. You can see the voltage here is 3.69 volts. Um, there's the uh, resistance is 56. I don't actually know what that means, so uh, I've gotta learn about that. And as you can see, the charge is slowly going up. And this is on cell one. So up here, it's the, the one. So that means it's the first cell in that, in that list. So we'll take another cell, pop it in. You can see it goes to number two. Uh, change it, I'm gonna do a charge on this. Again, a thousand milliamps. Uh, that's on 3.81 uh, volts at the moment. And we'll rinse and repeat. So number three. Uh, change it to normal test thousand and by the way if you put four cells in power it up and change the first item to whatever setting you want 
it will then carry that setting for all four. So you don't have to do this for every single cell. And the last one, uh, we're gonna charge out a thousand as well. Now you don't have to charge them to start with, but it's worth doing just to make sure that these do actually hold a charge. And this will take it, this device will take it to 4.2 volts. Um, and you can see how much milliamp hours is used by doing that. And then you can cycle through these devices, uh, one, two, three, four. You can see the um, voltage on each of the cells. Let's assume for the moment that you've done that or you want to go straight into a normal charge cycle. I'm just going to reset it because it's just a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to pull the power. So put the power in and make sure we're on cell number one. You drop it down to normal test and I'm going to go for a, a thousand milliamp normal test. Hopefully you can see that. And then it will start charging because this cell is not fully charged. It'll start charging to 4.2 volts. Then it'll start discharging down to about three volts and it'll give you your milliamp hours at the end. Once it's complete, um, that first cycle, it'll then give a flashing end symbol down here and then it will charge a battery back up again to 4.2 volts. And then the end uh, item down here, this little sign down here, uh, will be solid. And then that's your battery fully charged and discharged. And then at that point, you can actually realize how many milliamp hours are on that battery. And I normally write it on the side of the battery. So uh, I'm just gonna make sure these others are uh, on the test as well. And then I will leave this. This can take somewhere in the region of four hours to charge these cells fully up, and then another four hours to do the full discharge. Um, so I'm gonna leave this running. And the next video I will show you will be these cells at the end of their cycle so I can show you the milliamp hours and how that cycle has finished. Um, I wasn't quick enough changing this to uh, normal test, but there we go. So that is the Lito Carla Engineer LII 500. Um, this is the next stage of using these cells. Um, any cells that don't register on this device are probably broken and not worth keeping. So um, I don't know what the success rate is going to be on this. If we've got a nominal 120 cells, I will let you know how many of those cells uh, have been good and how many cells have been bad. So as promised, I said I'd show you what happens when you get to the end. Um, this happens to be cell number two, and you can see it's got 2,121 milliamp hours in it. Um, let's quickly check one of the other cells. Cell three, 2155. Cell four, 2145. And cell one is going through its test at the moment. So what I would now do is write that 2129 on the side of cell two. Um, it's going through its recharge at the moment, so the end is flashing, and you can see the volts are going up here, 3.93 at the moment. That will go up to uh, 4.2 volts, and then it will end, and there'll be a solid end there. So that's recharging your lithium-ion batteries. That's it for the moment, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Really appreciate those thumbs up, and I will see you next week on Tuesday. Cheers, guys. Bye.